It's a beautiful morning. I hope you're having an amazing day. It's Mark Wiens. I'm in Kigali, Rwanda. And today we are, it's about an hour away. We are going to a village community. Uh, we're gonna have a chance to learn about Rwandan culture. And then we're gonna cook some authentic local Rwandan food. Uh, so it's gonna be a very interesting day, a learning opportunity, uh, along with some delicious Rwandan food. And we are on our way right now. How far is the drive today? Um, I think it, to reach uh, Aziz, it will take one hour and uh, 20 minutes. One hour and 20 minutes. Okay. It's a Monday morning in Kigali, so we're experiencing a little bit of the Kigali traffic. Ah, uh, yeah, there's lots of motorbikes here. This is a market. We're starting to get more and more out of town, but I like there's so many people that are riding motorbikes and riding bicycles and walking along the side of the road. And then as you start to get out of town, you see the lush green hills and houses on the on the hills. And then you're starting to see farms. Oh, it's really spectacular scenery. They call Rwanda the land of a thousand hills, but I think that's an underestimate. There are so many hills. It's just a blanket of hills, terraced, there's farms, there's little villages and communities. It's spectacular. And we have just arrived uh, to the headquarters of Azizi Life, which is, uh, we are taking a tour through them today. Just stopped by the Azizi Life office uh, headquarters uh, really quickly just to get a brief of what we're doing today. They uh, empower communities through social entrepreneurship. So uh, lots of artisans. We'll be going to one of the, I believe, artisan communities, uh, but then Azizi Life also provides experiences uh, to experience the, the local customs and culture and learn, uh, and also the food, which is uh, where we're heading now. So we're, we're off to the, the village now. Hello. Hey. Nice to meet you. Hey. <laughs> Made it. That was just about a 10-minute drive from the from the town, and now we are in the the community. It's beautiful. Uh, we're right on the edge of a hill, or, or starting to go up on a hill. Oh, this is beautiful. Oh, Murajo. Diego. Murajo. Amakuru. Yeah. Thank you. Nimeza. Nice. Nimeza. Okay, Nimeza. My name is Esperata. Esperata. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. And how are you? Nice to meet you. Murako. 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 My name is Restuda. Hello, Micah. An extremely warm welcome. We greeted all the, the ladies from the community and we're on our way uh, into the village. Stepping into the, the house, it's kind of like a opening into a courtyard area. Murako. It's the way people ride the beans. The beans, okay. Oh, those are the peanuts. Yes. So you can see on the outside of the house, uh, they are yes. drying some of the beans and, and ground nuts, peanuts, which are very important in Rwandan cuisine. Yeah, the kitchen is over here. Yes. And then, but back here, this is the main house. Okay, so it's kind of like a courtyard area um, with the house, with the stables for the livestock, the kitchen over to one side, and we're just gonna step inside the house first. Just had a little introduction time uh, and then they also have some fabric, some of the local fabric for the for the ladies to dress in, so Ying is getting dressed. And then we're gonna we're gonna do some activities, we're gonna experience, immerse ourselves into the culture and then start cooking. our way with our jerry cans to go fetch water first and is there any water in the running water in the house no, no running water in the house so everybody has to get their own water ah, okay okay and it's like that it's like that in much of rural Africa where one of the main daily activities tasks is to go to fetch the water and bring it back for the cooking for the bathing for for everything Oh, wow, and the views are just spectacular. Sorghum. Sorghum? Yeah. Ah, okay. 
We walked down the hill probably for about 10 minutes and here is the water source, the fresh water source. <laughs> for the village. It comes from a borehole from this mountain, they said, but that's the fresh water supply. Uh, you see people from this entire community, from this entire hillside, getting their fresh water here. And now we're going all the way up the hill. I've only climbed up the first tiny little little hill and already I'm I'm the the air is getting thin. What is your name? My name is Mark, what's your name? Yes. And you have two of these bottles. Yes. Where's your house? Yes. Is it at the top of the hill? Yes. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Can you see yourself? Yes. How are you? Um, fine, thank you. Good, nice to meet you. <laughs> okay, so we're making our way up the hill. The hill gets steeper and steeper. Uh, but this is something that, I mean, most of us, definitely me, take for granted. Uh, when you turn on the faucet and you have uh, just flowing fresh water. But for a lot of the world, for especially this region and, and much of Africa, um, fetching water, carrying it back to the house is a daily necessity. And so it really opens your eyes if you have to carry your water up the hill to shower, to cook, uh, for, for everything. It's not an easy task at all, um, but it puts life into perspective. <laughs> yeah, that is a workout. Uh, and it, again, it really puts life into perspective. I mean, water is life. Uh, you need water to survive and having a fresh, clean source of water is, is everything. Uh, but then another thing is having to bring it to the house uh, rather than just turning on your faucet and then having the privilege to just turn on your faucet and have flowing water. Hello. 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 What is his name? Remy. Remy. Yes. Remy, nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you, Remy. We're all back now and we're gonna get started cooking, but much of the ingredients, the vegetables are grown like right outside, right within this community, within this village on the mountainside. Uh, there's some plantains, there's some cassava and sweet potato, there's a pumpkin, there's some leafy greens, and then oh, some of the tomatoes and some of the eggplants, and then also some pork. Okay. Everyone is helping to prepare the meal now, and the first step is peeling the beans and also peeling the cassava. Everywhere we go, especially in the village, Micah has so many friends. They already have pre-cooked some of the beans because they take hours to cook, uh, but they're also going to cook some cassava and they have a, a stove system that's built out of mud, but it just holds the pots perfectly so they can have a fire underneath, uh, just flaming, usually with, with wood so that it flames. Along with the beans, they put in the peeled cassava. That's going to boil together and said it might turn a bitter taste. I've never had that combination boiled like that and then just salt in there. It's also going to be beans and sweet potato, which they are going to cook over. It's, a, it's an eco-designed stove that saves energy so it doesn't burn as fast. We got cassava and beans, we have sweet potato and beans, and then pumpkin and beans.
Okay, so I was planning to kind of sneak out and fly the drone, uh, but then I think one person saw and the entire community has come, but they're all so friendly uh, and they were very excited, so I, I did a little demonstration. Very good. I think the whole community is out now. Okay, now we are heading back to, to cook. Bye bye. Bye bye. Dry cassava? Yes, dry cassava. Dry cassava and gonna make a type of ugali. Now, ugali is often with cornmeal, but this will be a cassava ugali. Um, and she's pounding it using the wooden mortar and pestle. We should do our bit. Yeah. So it continues to cook. Yes. This is one of the facilities of Azizi life. Ah, okay. And they have something called a wonder box. It looks like a really solid foam, kind of like cone shaped uh, little box. And that's like an insulation device. So they, they put the beans in that. Um, and then they'll continue to cook on their own using the pre-existing heat. But that's one of the thing that, things that Azizi Life introduces, uh, more efficient means of cooking. Okay, for the plantains, they're just frying up some, a little bit of garlic, onions, and tomatoes. After they pounded it, then she sifted it uh, to only get that really fine powder. Okay, and along with all of the starches and the beans and the vegetarian dishes, they're gonna make a meat dish, which is called akabenz, which is uh, it's a it's a famous oh hi Micah, it is a famous Rwandan pork specialty. Oh, she added the aubergine. Okay, is the pumpkin? With the beans? And they are preparing to fry the akabens, the fry the pork, uh, but it's going into a clay pot uh, and that's gonna be better flavor over the fire. Yeah. You can really smell the bean aroma and those uh, that pumpkin. Yeah, getting a little smoke in the eye, but then also you can hear that the pork is starting to hiss away in that clay pot And that's gonna be really good and they added no oil to the pork because the pork is just gonna sizzle out its own its own uh, fat I love kilikili for the vegetable, it's called mboga dodo, uh, but it, it looks, I'm not exactly sure what it is, it looks like meat to a type of, like, like almost like a type of water morning glory, um, with like hollow stems and leaves, and then they just fried uh, some onions and some, just some onions, and then put that in the, the pan with the oil. And first, it's water. This one is for the akabens? Yeah. <laughs> for the akabens, for that pork, uh, they simmer it down in its own juices until the water boils out and then the fat, the oil comes. Um, and then she's gonna fry it with some onions, some celery, and some tomatoes. And the final step is to add in some tomato paste to the pork. Something I've really learned today is the importance of beans in the Rwandan culture and food and diet. Uh, and even boiling the beans and then you get the water, bean water or bean juice. Uh, that's very important for flavoring and for, for cooking dishes as well. After boiling the water, then she put the cassava powder into the water and then she's really working it, stirring it. It's a lot of work. Um, and if you can see it getting stickier and like coming together as she works it. Cooking took like three hours, but I think all the food is ready. Now. We're dishing everything up, we're, we're getting ready to eat. Okay. It's beautiful and, and the majority of all of the ingredients are from right here. We're all sitting around. I'm gonna, there must be like 10 different dishes, but most of them have beans in them. Um, I'm gonna try to get a little bit of everything. This one is cooked with beans as well. 
gonna have to limit my, my portions of everything or you'll have a mountain of a plate very quickly. This one is beans with something. And then this one is beans with the uh, vegetable. The dodo. Dodo. Yes. Mboga dodo. This one kind of looks just like plain beans maybe? Oh, okay. Oh, maybe I already got that. Okay, I'll move on to the akabens. This one is the akabens, the, the pork beans. It's a type of white bean with aubergine. Oh yeah, there's aubergine in here. Okay. Sweet potato is here with beans also, and you can see that it's cooked in the bean juice, so you can see it has this kind of like brown color on it. Sava cooked with beans. Let's see if I can get a grab a chunk of this. Finally, this one is the pumpkin oh, and that's just cooked down until like soft, like fall apart soft pumpkin on there. Okay, and then the final is the ugali, and you can see that is just wow, oh wow, that's a that is pasty. I'm gonna put this on the side here, and I think I got everything. Okay, I'm all served. I got a little. I managed to get a little bit of everything on this plate, plus some of the avocado, and it's colorful. It's natural. I want to start with really some of those, uh, some of that vegetable with some of those beans. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that does taste kind of like spinach, the vegetable, but then it's wrapped up within the beans. You've got the starchy beans in there. Next up, I'll try some of the ugali. Oh wow, that has an extremely like bouncy, bouncy texture, like a dough. And I will pick up some of the some of the beans with that as well. Wow. Yeah. Because the the cassava is like very glutinous, it's very. It's very sticky. I could know. But yeah, there's like a there's like a glue factor to it. Next up, I gotta try some of that akaben. So this is the the pork that's been stewed down with the tomato sauce, with the tomatoes and onions, and then just simmered in its own oil fat. Oh yeah. Oh, it's so tender. Mm. It's just fall apart tender. It's also worth noting that. Uh, the majority, I mean all the dishes except for this pork are vegetarian dishes and vegetarian dishes um, are most common. Meat is more for a special occasion or meat in small amounts are eaten for meals. Uh, but this is a this is a special occasion, and it, it goes well with all of the all of the beans and all of the, the vegetarian dishes. Now I've got to try some of that avocado. That is just calling my name. And uh, leave the skin on so you can just kind of. Oh, the avocado is amazing. Oh, it's, that's the pure butteriness. Mm. It even has that like pronounced avocado flavor. Oh, you can just pull that right off the skin. That's how you know it's just perfectly ripe. The skin just peels. Okay, what have I not tried yet? I gotta try some of that pumpkin. Um, there's also some of those white beans, white beans down there with some of the aubergine. I'll mix that a little bit. You've got the, the pumpkin is really nice, just slightly sweet with that honey kind of flavor to it. And it just kind of like melts in your mouth. And then you've got the beans. Okay, I'm looking for that plantain. I think I lost it down here, down, down somewhere. Where's that plantain? Oh, here's the plantain. Okay. It was hiding behind some beans. Oh yeah. Plantain is great. Um, again, it's a very light flavor. It's just simmered down with tomatoes, a little bit of onions, as most of the dishes are, and then cooked within the bean sauce, the bean juice. So there's very, very little seasoning, mostly just salt within the cooking. So it's not, not like extremely flavorful, but the, what stands out is just the naturalness, the freshness of the ingredients. That was an incredible meal, but even more so than the food, the company, the community, the amazing ladies behind the food who prepared it. 
Uh, and one thing that I wanted to mention is that, I mean, the food, food was very little, had very little spice or seasoning, but you could taste the natural ingredients. Uh, and you, when you're in this setting, you can start to learn about how food is produced all the way from the beginning to the end process. And you really appreciate the ingredients, just like the water. Um, and something that we take for granted so, so often. <laughs> Nothing like a little dance and singing after a large lunch. <laughs> We finished with lunch. Uh, we had some amazing time of fellowship, dancing and singing after that big lunch. This was an incredible day, learning about Rwandan culture, getting a, a first-hand glance at uh, what it's like in the community, in a rural community, uh, fetching the water, then cooking the food. Uh, that's, just a, that's just a taste of the life in this community and it was very special to have that experience and the food is grown right here in this community and then cooked right here and and that's really special and that adds to the meal i mean that that makes the meal so i just want to say a huge thank you to azizi life and i'll leave their link in the description box i think they did an amazing job uh, and thank you for watching this video please remember to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it leave a comment below i'd love to hear from you and if you're not already subscribed click subscribe now and also click that little bell icon so that you get notified of the next video that I publish. Goodbye from the beautiful rolling hills of Rwanda. I'll see you on the next video.